In this video, I'm going to share with you something that not very many people who've been burned by a narcissist ever consider. I am guessing that the urge to take revenge on the narcissist is something that has run through your mind. I mean, it's, it's natural, isn't it? You hurt me, and I want you to experience the same feeling that I felt. It's like if you do nothing, you come across as being weak. It's the sort of fear you might experience if you don't do anything. I just let them get away with it. But wait, let me share something that happens in narcissist land. I'm Carol Rathel, and this channel is about healing with self-love. Because self-love is the most important thing to do. I think this is going to be an enormous help to know that you don't need to lift a finger. You don't need to have any sense of guilt for having taken an action that you no normally wouldn't take on anybody else. Let's take a look at the timeline of a narcissist. As they progress through life, and I'm going to show you how the narcissist actually enacts revenge on themselves. Let's look at the narcissist being in the age group of their 20s. And there's a gathering of people. Of course, the narcissist is going to be the center of attention of that gathering. It might be they play a musical instrument and then they start to sing and maybe play a guitar and everybody's attention is on them. Or they might hold everybody's attention by loudly telling a story that is most likely a lie with some humor in it. And everybody thinks, oh, this person is just so amazing. Whatever they're doing, they're being the center of attention. And woe betide anybody who starts a conversation somewhere on the fringes that's going to generate a few dirty looks. Because why aren't you giving me all the attention? So if you met the narcissist for the first time at that gathering, it's very natural for you to think, well, this person must be a good person because look at all those people who like them. This is the narcissist's modus operandi. I think I said that right. Now, if the narcissist gave you special attention on one of those occasions, you most likely would feel really special that you got their attention. Now, let me tell you, at that gathering, there are one third of the people like yourself, maybe if you've met this person for the first time, who thinks, wow, this is an amazing person. They've met them for the first time and they're completely taken in by the charm and the fakery that the narcissist is portraying in that moment. There are likely to be one third of the people there who've met the narcissist before, who feel kind of privileged to be there at the gathering. And these people are likely to be under the control of the narcissist. They're still under this spell. They do what the narcissist wants and they still take in the lies and deceit that the narcissist is telling them. And there are likely to be one third of the people at that gathering who are quite frankly fed up by it all. They hate how the narcissist is taking all the attention. They weren't at the gathering to see that narcissist and they resent how the attention is being focused on them when they would much rather be interacting with other people there whose attention is focused on the narcissist. Now, this one third of the group most likely are gathering together because they're the only ones who aren't mesmerized by the narcissist. And that one third are likely dabbling 
in the conversation, like, don't you think that's weird? They're starting to see through the performance. Now roll on a few years. When people pair up and start to have a family, they're more likely to gather around their children. There will be a huge amount of people in that gathering of the past who no longer gather with the NASA. They've moved on and the whole scene has changed. There may still be that original third of people who were mesmerized by having met the narcissist for the first time, they may be part of the new group of the narcissist. The other people most likely will have moved on and are focusing on their lives. Now, what this means for the narcissist is that two thirds of their supply, their barrel of narcissistic supply has gone. So they need to gather in more people a lot more people to get their narcissistic supply back and the pattern will repeat again there'll be a third of the people who are taken in completely they're brand new there will be a third of the people who are still following along but they're ready to be the people who are going to be fed up and will leave that group now, the narcissist is likely to have to recreate themselves because most of their social network are people who are raising children. So they're going to maybe quickly get into a relationship with someone who has children to fit into that social scene because that's what the normal scene is, maybe in the 30s age group. So they will have recreated themselves and they're going to portray themselves as the best parent, as knowing everything about child raising. And they'll be holding forth at a gathering on how to raise your children, how to be the best parent, how I'm the best parent. I do everything right. As people progress into the next phase of life, the children become teenagers or around that age group, they're less likely to want to go to social gatherings because it's going to be far nicer to have a night at home relaxing while the teenager's out having some social interaction. So looking at the narcissist, again, their social group, their bucket of narcissistic supply has dried up again. And they're going to have to recreate themselves again. Now, every time that bucket of narcissistic supply dries up, the narcissist goes through what we call a narcissist, whoops, a narcissistic crisis. They feel the crisis most painfully. If you can imagine, it's like I'm hiding in their closet thinking, oh, everything I've done, nothing's working for me. What am I going to do? And they recreate their personality to become something that fits into the new social paradigm. I've witnessed a narcissist doing this about six times. As their life fell apart, the social scene changed, they lost their narcissistic supply, and they went to work creating a whole new personality. I mean, Thank God we don't do that, right? Thank God we can still be ourselves. And maybe we don't have a big social group anymore because we've been so bitten by a narcissist that possibly you're avoiding people at the risk of meeting a narcissist. And maybe your friends, you can count on one hand of people that you can truly trust. Most people in who are aged 35 plus or 40 plus don't have a big group of friends anymore they have narrowed their friendships down to the people who they can trust who really matter in their life and those are the people that they might gather with or drop in for coffees 
Now, as we head into middle age, people just want to spend the night at home or they're pursuing hobbies. And when we get to middle age, it's the time that we tend to focus on what really matters in our lives because we feel the advancing years. Now, the narcissist is facing the fact that the tools that they use to draw people in aren't working anymore. And that is, their looks are faded. They're looking older. The type of charm they used in the past isn't working for them anymore. They have to learn new ways to get people's attention. Sorry about the camera rocking. I've got this on the bed and the cat's washing itself and making the computer wobble a bit. The narcissist starts to become bitter because they just have such a reduced source of supply. They're likely to be even more manipulative and more controlling and much harsher to the person who happens to be in a relationship with them. Now, that person has a choice to stay or leave, and they're most likely to leave. So the narcissist is having a rapid turnover of partners and becoming more and more stressed out because their supply is reducing constantly. Can you see what I mean by they're bringing the revenge on themselves? Their addictive behaviors might have increased to cope with the lack of supply. They become bitter people. Anybody who encounters them is likely to hear a string of stories about all these people who hurt them. Now, who wants to listen to that? For a while, yes, they might give them the pity that they need, but people aren't going to hang around very long for that kind of a story or that kind of behaviour. And definitely, if the bitterness is aimed at them, who wants to stay in that relationship? It takes somebody very broken and who really hates themselves to think that this narcissist is the only person who can possibly love me. And that is the type of thing that the narcissist is counting on. But those people are going to walk. The narcissist becomes a lonely, bitter person. I'm putting a video at the end of this one for you to watch that speaks about what happens with the narcissist in old age. And I really think it could be helpful for you to watch that if you haven't seen that before or if you don't know what happens. So really, the demise of the narcissist is that they turn all of your guys' desire to have revenge that you don't act on because you're a really nice person onto themselves and they create their own demise. You could say the law of karma acts on them. They put out there what they will get back. Hey, you don't need to lift a finger. And, and maybe there's part of yourself that feels sorry for the narcissist. It's okay if you do. But they are responsible for what they create in their own lives, not you. If you've enjoyed this video, please tap the like button. Please share it. And subscribe if you're not already. What I want you to do is get on with your recovery. And there are a lot of videos on this channel on recovering from narcissistic to help you. There are tools in there that will help you get in your recovery so that you never have to deal with a narcissist doing that to you ever again. Until the next video, I'm sending you love.